My name is Michael Santos. I'm the founder of Prison Professors, and I'm super enthusiastic to have people like you in our course. Now, most of the people in our course are either in jail or prison or federal prison, and they don't really recognize how the world is changing, particularly if they've been incarcerated for a long time. I went to prison in 2000 and, no, 1987. I didn't get out until 2012. I transitioned to a halfway house, and I learned a great deal about how the world could change while somebody is serving a sentence. And it's our responsibility when we're in that environment to keep up with those changes. That's the reason behind the digital economy course. We believe that the world is going to continue to change in the months, years, and decades ahead. And as part of our advocacy efforts, we strive to show people how to use time inside to prepare for success outside. The one promise I always make is I will never lie to you, and I will never ask anyone to do anything that I didn't do. Now, I want to say that creating these courses takes a tremendous amount of resources, financial and time, and a lot of talented people. I couldn't do this by myself. I'm super grateful to have uh, volunteers for our nonprofit, including Ryan Salem, who's educated me on the digital economy. And I also want to thank our other sponsors, including the Writing Wrong Law Firm, and also whitecolloradvice.com. These are organizations that, that align with us in our belief of changing the system, but changing the system requires a big ecosystem. And that and you are a part of that ecosystem. We want you to demonstrate why you are a worthy candidate for relief, for earning freedom. As I wrote about in my book, Earning Freedom, Conquering a 45-Year Prison Sentence, as I teach in our preliminary introductory course called preparing for success after prison. This is not about any of us. It's all about you and how badly do you want to succeed upon release. If you want to succeed, you might enjoy learning from today's lesson, number 18 on altcoins. We are going to be discussing Monero. And so I'm going to read about Monero right now, and I will provide some follow-up commentary on the back end of this lesson, including sharing about my own investments. So, as we continue our journey through the world of altcoins, we turn our focus to Monero under the symbol XMR. It is a cryptocurrency that stands out for its strong commitment to privacy and security. Now, unlike many other cryptocurrencies, Monero ensures that all transactions remain completely anonymous and untraceable. For that reason, law enforcement agencies and regulatory bodies pay close attention to Monero because of the cryptocurrency's strong privacy features. Monero's technology makes transactions on its blockchain completely anonymously and untraceable, distinguishing it from cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, where transactions are transparent and traceable on the blockchain. The anonymity and untraceability of Monero transactions can hinder law enforcement's ability to track the flow of funds, investigate financial crimes, and enforce anti-money laundering regulations. And as a result, many law enforcement agencies associate Monero and other privacy-centric cryptocurrencies with illicit activities on the dark web, even though the vast majority of users may use Monero for legitimate reasons that value privacy. To avoid problems, some cryptocurrency exchanges delisted Monero and similar privacy coins to comply with regulatory requirements and to avoid potential legal complications. At Prison Professors, we would argue that technology itself is neutral, and the emphasis on privacy reflects a growing demand among users for greater financial confidentiality in the digital age. The challenge for regulators, law enforcement, and the cryptocurrency community is to find effective ways to address legitimate privacy concerns while preventing and combating misuse. So what are the origins of Monero? Well, Monero was launched in 2014 with a focus on privacy, security, and untraceability. It was developed to address the transparency of transactions in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, where transaction details and wallet addresses are recorded on a public blockchain. So what are the, some of the key features? Well, privacy, of course. Monero uses ring signatures and stealth addresses to obscure the origins, amounts, 
and destinations of all transactions. Monero's blockchain is secure and resistant to hacking attempts, providing users with peace of mind regarding their financial transactions. Untraceability. Thanks to, thanks to cryptographic techniques, it is nearly impossible to trace transactions back to the individuals involved. Given the challenges we already face in advocating for prison reform, our team at Prison Professors Charitable Corporation would not use Monero for our platform. Now, that does not mean that other organizations that uh, you know, don't want to use this type of cryptocurrency on their own. There are legitimate reasons maybe for, for, for others that want to really embrace the, the privacy features of Monero. But that isn't our concern, right? We want to be always thinking about how are we going to um, you know, advance our role of changing the American prison system. That's the goal that I have. And, and so we want you to be aware of, of that as well. That's why we would not use Monero. But its strong privacy features appeal to users who do seek that anonymity. And that makes it challenging for traditional businesses to adopt it openly and comply with regular, regulatory standards, especially those related to anti-money laundering and KYC, meaning know your customer regulations. Because of these privacy features, it is less common to find mainstream companies and organizations publicly accepting Monero for services or products. Those companies prefer more transparent cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. But Monero is popular within certain niches and communities that prioritize privacy and security. You know, some of those examples might include privacy-focused online marketplaces. Some online platforms that emphasize privacy and security for their users accept Monero as a payment method. And these would include marketplaces for digital goods, privacy tools, or services where users prefer to keep their identities and tractions, transactions confidential. Maybe a gambling site, for example, could be one, or a dating site, or, or some of these other sites. They may use Monero. Some charitable organizations also may be more inclined to use Monero or privacy-oriented you know, charities and advocacy groups. They want, they want to accept donations in Monero because they value the anonymity it provides to donors. This allows individuals to support causes they care about without disclosing their identity. For example, think about some of the really hot-button controversial issues like abortion or gambling or porn. Or all these different, you know, draw, uh, what do you call it, marijuana, legalization of marijuana. It's a, they're very controversial. And there may be people who want to support it, but, but the organizations and the individuals may want to completely be anonymous. And Monero could potentially be a, uh, a, a an, alt, an option for them to consider. So some VPN, virtual private network services that focus on providing secure and private internet access for their users accept Monero as payment. This aligns with the privacy and security goals of both the VPN provider and the customer. Even web hosting services, you know, there's a limited number of web hosting and domain registration services that cater to privacy-conscious individuals and organizations, and they accept Monero, allowing the customers to purchase web hosting services completely anonymously. So while specific mainstream companies directly using Monero may not be widely publicized due to the cryptocurrency's privacy-centric network the, or nature, the Monero community continues to advocate for broader adoption across various services and platforms. And the focus remains on enhancing financial privacy and security for individuals in an increasingly digital world that tracks everything. So... I'll provide a little bit more commentary on Monero in a moment, but first I just want to, as I do with every lesson, reveal the investment that I made back on, um, you know, when I started this. I wrote this particular lesson on Friday, February the 23rd, 2024 at four o'clock in the afternoon. And back then the price of Bitcoin was trading in a range that I looked on Coinbase and it was still $50,000, $50,853.80. My total investment as of that day was still at $192,202.76 for four Bitcoins. And the value was still $203,415.20. And 
representing a gain for me of $11,212.44. I also had purchased one ETH, and my ETH was uh, cost me $3,021.22, and that day it was valued at $2,927.63. In the previous lesson, I showed you a new um, a new uh, site that I visited that I thought was was really exciting. Um, it was showing me the uh, real-time price of various currencies. I could switch over to that site right now um, and share it with you. And as I am filming the video on March the 6th at 10.03 in the morning, you can see Bitcoin's trading at $67,537, um, which is super exciting for me as an investor. Um, that's significantly higher than when I began purchasing the coins, which was, as you may recall, only $43,000 a coin when I started. So it's up significantly, and I've increased my holdings significantly as well. If I click down here to the portfolios, you can see I have now have 10 of those um, in this particular account. And I'm always looking at the market, always trying to figure out, is this the right asset class for me right now? Or should I be looking at other assets as I contemplate my future? And that's really what I want you to be doing. Now, Monero is not the right type of altcoin for me. I, I, I would not ever build a business on Monero because I know who I am. I'm a guy who served 26 years in prison. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't ever tell anybody to do, to do anything with their money. You know, but I, I can tell you one thing. If you're getting into cryptocurrencies, you better have a high stomach for volatility and you better be able to withstand the the complications that come with this world because it is still a very nascent technology. It is, it is not widely accepted today, although it's significantly more acceptable than it was five years ago or 10 years ago. In five years, it, I believe it's really going to be even much more uh, acceptable across the world. All types of, of cryptocurrencies. I'm really primarily in Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I have some interest in others as well. What's important is not what I'm doing. What's important is what are you doing? In what ways are you architecting a plan that will make sure you come back to society strong, with your dignity intact, with opportunities to prosper, with uh, an asset that will help the world see you as something more than the worst decision that you made that maybe led you into the prison system. You've got to start building your own reputation again, rebuilding it. And we want to provide you with tools that will help you do that. That's the reason that we completely funded prisonprofessorstalent.com so that you could build your own profile and memorialize what you're doing. What books are you reading? What classes are you participating in? In what way are you avoiding disciplinary problems in prison? All of that is an example of critical thinking. All of that is an example of demonstrating you know how to be in a crisis and yet still invest in yourself and prepare for success. And the more that you do that and document it and put it on its own blockchain, right, so the rest of the world can see it, the the stronger our advocacy becomes because we could point to you and say, hey, look at John or Letitia or Karen or Stephen or Juan or anybody else who's going through these I don't, you might never meet me. I may never meet you. But that does not absolve me of the responsibility of sharing the lessons that I learned and that helped me emerge successfully with my dignity intact. That's what I want for you. And it's the reason I always end these lessons with three critical thinking questions. Number one, how does Monero's focus on privacy and security differentiate it from other cryptocurrencies? Two, in what ways could the privacy features of Monero be leveraged to support social causes and charitable initiatives? And three, consider the ethical implications of complete anonymous transactions. How can they be balanced with the need for transparency in charitable donations? There's no right answer to those questions. There's no wrong answer. There's only your answer. You know, you've got to figure out ways of responding to controversial topics. 
how are you always going to learn how to advocate for yourself? That's one of the reasons we, our courses, including our introductory course, focuses on developing a better vocabulary, developing writing skills, developing reading skills, showing a self-directed path, and an insane self-directed work ethic. You can see that's what I'm doing. I'm here every day creating content that I, nobody's going to pay me to create, okay? No, nobody's going through this course will ever pay me a penny, and I'll never ask you for a penny. I want My success comes from making a massive impact and seeing a million people come out of prison and change their life and become successful. If you want to be a part of that community, I incentivize you to get started by sending us an email to interns at prisoninvestorstalent.com. Make sure that you write subject line, digital economy course. If you don't have access to email, go ahead and drop it in the old mail uh, an envelope and just send it to prison professors care of the digital economy course at 32565 Golden Lantern, suite B as in boy-1026 in Dana Point, California, 92629. And our interns will take care of it from there. Make sure also that if you've got access to the Adobe platform, you use that platform. That's the best way of doing it. And um, again, I just always want to thank you for being a part of our community. I want to thank Ryan Salem for educating me on the digital economy and showing me how to uh, build this particular course and teach people. I want to thank our sponsors who provide the resources we need to produce the content and share it with as many people as possible. Um, that would include the Writing Wrongs Law Firm. It would also include whitecolloradvice.com. And um, I, I, I want you to be thinking about this because this course is not about us. It's definitely about you. And it's about how hard do you want to work to build your pathway to success. One of the great pieces of sadness in my life is when I see so many people come out of prison unable to function and filled with excuses about, oh, it's not my fault. The prison didn't offer me this. The prison didn't offer me that. Okay, none of that matters. All that matters is you. How hard are you willing to work on yourself? These courses are self-directed. We encourage you to work your way through them. And we also encourage you to memorialize your journey by writing to us at prisonprofessorstalent.com. I am Michael Santos. On behalf of our entire team, including my collaborator, Ryan Salem, I want to thank you. And I want to let you know I believe in you. Be successful. Bye.